<sighs> hey kids, it's Finn, and I'm chilling this fine Friday afternoon. So, I said earlier this week, was it this week? Fucking last week? I don't remember. I don't be remembering shit. I don't even know what today's date is, to be honest. I said that I was going to do a video on something real, on something that happened to me uh, last week and this is it so guys buckle in it's gonna be a bumpy ride so an interesting idea is the concept of quid pro quo you scratch my back i scratch yours unfortunately this is a construct that has put a lot of disenfranchised groups at a massive disadvantage because the people with the power are the ones that set the motherfucking rules. So, as a person who is a member of a series of disenfranchised groups, I am not immune to the pain, the discomfort, the overall experience of quid pro quo. So let me get into it. I have a Toyota RAV4, 1998. They're old as fuck. Their name is Ravi. I'm really fucking into K-pop, so if you get the reference, a. I've had this car for about three years. It's my college car, and the person that had it before me didn't take very good care of it, and so I've been saddled with all the issues that Ravi has in the future, my present. So last year, I went to the Toyota dealership to get a tune-up, thinking, you know, they're gonna fucking gouge me, of course, but they're gonna have like premium products, premium service, so I'll be golden. I won't have to fucking worry about shit. That was a fucking lie. That was a lie. That was a lie. That was a lie. Nigga. So let's fast forward to two weeks ago. I went to get my oil changed and they look at my fluids and are like, the fuck is going on here? You got an oil leak? An oil leak? Bitch, they said they gave me a new oil pan. Apparently not. Apparently fucking not. On top of that, I need power steering fluid, transmission fluid, and coolant. So I'm just thinking like, what did they do to my car? What did they do that I paid for? I paid like nearly a thousand dollars for this tune up. What the fuck did they do? To get my oil changed, I had gone up to the casserole down the street from my house. And they're really cool there. They always take care of me. Uh, the people there just really like me. And, you know, I like them. I got a pretty good discount. Um, all those fluids and stuff, it comes up to about 700-ish dollars. I paid 210 to get all those fluids, you know, swapped out. So I'm feeling pretty good. I'm sitting pretty in my boy Ravi. Uh, just chilling, you know, but there was another issue that needed to be addressed and that was my timing belt and so I had about 235,000 miles or have currently in Ravi and I, I Needed to get the timing belt replaced because the people that had the car before me never got the timing belt replaced And you're supposed to get that shit replaced at least, you know, 80 to 100,000 miles and I have over like, you know, double that double and a half what the Fuck. So I asked my friend, let's call him John. I asked John, where can I go to get my timing belt replaced? Because this is something that really needs to, to be done pretty quickly. Just because I don't want to, you know, fuck up my car. I live in a, I live in a rich area. I live in a white area. And so all of the, the shops around here, they want to charge, you know, upwards of a thousand, twelve hundred dollars to uh, do my timing belt. And I'm like, bitch. I paid $2,500 for this car. I'm not about to pay half of that to get a timing belt replaced. That's not happening. That is not happening. I love Ravi with all my fucking heart, but like, baby, you over 20 years old. We can't, we can't be doing this. One of John's colleagues gives me a tip. It was a place that he used to work at, and he gives me the number, and I call up there and set an appointment to have my car looked at. So the next day, I go up to the Nally dealership, and they look at my car and they say, oh shit, your oil pan is broken. You need a new one. That's going to be $450. And I was like, bitch, what does it say right here? What is it? Does that say oil pan? 
Does that say that you replaced my oil pan nearly half a year ago? Isn't that what y'all did? What the fuck? What happened? What happened? And better yet, how are you going to fix this? So long story short, the oil pan is in warranty and they fix it for free. They clean my car and I'm fucking off to the races. I go up to this other place to have my car looked at for the timing belt and this nice older guy comes out. He's pretty cool. We're talking. He gets a phone call. He comes back to me, continues the conversation like, wow, he was actually listening to the shit I was saying. Um, and he goes out to look at my car and when he comes back in, I guess his boss, the guy that I've actually been talking to over the over text, has um, come in and he is, he's got a little bit of a different energy going on, let's just say. Um, he proceeds to come within inches of my body. He just entirely invades my personal space, shakes my hand, holds it for a really fucking long time, kind of does this weird finger thing and I'm like, bitch, I not today not today are you gonna try me today mm. on this lovely fucking Wednesday I thought I was having a good day well all right let's go let's fucking go let's do this this guy's landing on a little fucking thick as far as um you know the attraction and I know why it happened I know why it happened because everything happens for a fucking reason and I'll explain it to y'all. Give me one sec. Okay. So before I step back, let me let me just tell you a few things. Um, the reason why this shit happened is because I was wearing a dress. That's literally the bottom line. This is the dress I was wearing. Take it all in. It comes down to like my knee. Like it's not super short. It's, you know, a little cleavage. Like, I could have a lot more cleavage than this. It's um, clingy, but you know, comfortable. And so, the reason why I was low-key harassed is because I was wearing this. And I realized, you know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And I'm not saying that I am. I'm not saying that I'm like the most attractive person on the planet. I'm not coming from a position of being conceited. I'm just looking at this as objectively as I possibly can. I'm attractive to a lot of people. I realize that. And before you get the idea in your head that like, this is slutty behavior, this is skanky, this is manipulative, take into consideration the system in which we live. I am a person that looks particularly feminine and when it comes to going to any type of establishment that has to do with car repair or cars in general, it is a known fact that the workers at said establishments take advantage of feminine presenting individuals because they don't know shit about cars. And I honestly don't know shit about cars. And so, what do I have at my disposal? What tools do I have that I could use so that I don't get gouged? That I don't get taken advantage of when I enter this establishment? Well, it's my femininity. It's my perceived femininity, my perceived sexuality, because you boys not fucking interested in, in people as sexual objects at fucking all. And when you think about it, really what I'm doing is no different from a black person going into you know a job interview and putting on that white voice you know the one, you know the one. Putting on the white voice in order to get that job because we live in a system that wasn't fucking built for us. And so this is how we acclimate. This is how we fucking adapt in order to get the things that we need <laughs> to continue living comfortable lives. So before you get on that manipulative track, I just want to put those facts out there. You can come to whatever conclusion you would like to about my behavior, about the way that I dressed, but um, know that it came from a position of not wanting to be fucked. So I'm gonna fuck somebody else before they fuck me, to be honest. So back to the story. I enter this shop, 
My my personal space is roundly violated by this man. Let's name him Dave. Dave came up in my personal space and made me feel very fucking uncomfortable. And I'm a person that is absolutely open to using their femininity as a tool to get the things that they want. But, but, on this day, I was not prepared for the, the sheer intrusion of my personal boundaries that was going to happen. And he was saying weird shit too. Like, you didn't tell me when we were texting that you were so fucking pretty. And I was like, bitch, why would I say that? Why would I tell you that? Why would that be something that I would feel necessary to, to point out to you? Why would that be any part of a conversation between a patron and an employee? Why? So 10 minutes later, I'm heading out of this place. Dave was just so interested. He was very interested. But unlike the other guy that I spoke to, when we had a conversation, he got a phone call. He didn't give a shit about what I had to say. And like, that's the difference. The, the investment in the customer. And like, at this point, I'm no longer customer. I am a fucking conquest. And when I came back to get my car um, over the weekend, he shot his shot. He, he did, he fucking went for it. And this time I was prepared. Cause the first time around, I was made very uncomfortable by the energy that he was blasting at me. But the second time around, I had my defenses up, I was ready. So I come in there and he says, it's gonna be 490. And I was like, oh my God, that's great. Thank you so much. And he's like, well, you know why I gave you such a big discount. Normally I, you know, I would charge, you know, a thousand dollars for this. You know why I gave you the discount? And I was like, because I'm so great. You know, being fucking obtuse. Um, and he's like, no, no, because you're pretty, because you're cute. And I was like, that's a part of my fucking greatness. I don't even know why, why are you putting that out? Nigga, that's a part of the package. My attractiveness is a part of my greatness. Thank you. And you're welcome. So this energy that specifically cishet men project onto me personally and probably a lot of other um, feminine presenting people is, it's like sexual energy. It's, it's different from platonic. It's different from just, you know, a nebulous interest in a person. It's purely a sexual energy. It's aggressive. It's fucking feral. But highest on the list is unfriendly. It is distinctly unfriendly. And unfriendly doesn't necessarily mean threatening. But to a lot of people, it can feel threatening. And to me, I didn't feel like I was in any imminent danger. But... You know, those vibes are not something that I want to engage with, something that I want have like any kind of fucking interest in seeing what the end of that that fucking tunnel is. Absolutely not. And a lot of people might be under the impression that he was being nice by giving me like nearly a 50% discount. But was he really though? In my mind, what he was doing wasn't a gift. It wasn't charity he was paying for something he was paying for sex he was paying for a date he was paying for my company whatever he wanted from me that's what he thought he was fucking paying for unfortunately those are not services that i fucking provide so next what he fucking paid for was the ability to talk to me any sort of fucking kind of way that he wanted to and to invade my personal space that was like 400 to 600 dollars worth of discomfort so before people start thinking like you should throw him a bone you should talk to him you should text him you should give him your ig no nah, no nah. i'm not fucking interested in speaking to people that don't respect my boundaries first off and especially people that don't take fucking no for an answer i can't can't stand that shit let's fast forward to today because we had a new development today from our good friend John at the place that I get my oil changed. I've been talking to John because he's really funny, he's really friendly, and 
he gave me a really good discount and um, he never really stepped out of bounds like as far as just talking to me. It never felt like uncomfortable talking to him. And also I was sending him uh, pictures of my car so that he could see what exactly was wrong with it so he could, you know, kind of diagnose it. And so it was, you know, mostly business, a little bit, you know, conversation, fun shit. And so uh, today he pulls this fucking line saying, you know, we're friends, right? And I was like, oh God damn, okay. Just think of me as your gay best friend. Like, nigga, you know that I'm married, right? You know that. The next thing he proposes is that he's going to send me a dick pic. And I was like, huh, huh, no thank you. I'll take your fucking word for it. Thanks for the offer though, god damn. I'm so tired. I'm so fucking tired of not being able to speak to men without being bombarded with sexual energy. I'm so goddamn tired of it. And like, even with Diglett, it's fucking annoying. Because it, it's just, it's a thing that's like supplanted in their minds all the fucking time. And I can't help that like, I look really attractive in shorts. Cause it's fucking hot outside. What do you expect me to wear? But yeah, as far as quid pro quo goes, I always find it entirely hilarious how people respond to seeing people who have gained the system, who have taken advantage of the system, use the system to their advantage, um, refuse to be fucking victims. Uh, I find it funny that they have this, this response that these people are being manipulative when they were born into a system that is inherently stacked against them and any and all efforts to pull yourself out of that to to gain any kind of traction be it economically be it socially is seen as being manipulative instead of looking at the people who have designed this system in order to keep others down like i just find that funny i find it fucking funny this has been a lesson in quid pro quo and not allowing it to dictate your fucking life because I'm not interested in being a victim. I'm not interested in being taken advantage of and I refuse to let it happen. I mean, it's happened a lot when I was younger and, you know, a little less informed. But, you know, as time has gone on, I've become a bit wiser, a bit more understanding, a bit jaded and a bit distrustful of any and all people that I encounter on an everyday basis. And so, yeah, it was an interesting experience. It was an uncomfortable experience, but above all, it was a learning experience. I'll talk to y'all later.